Well, hello friends, welcome back. It is so good to see you all. I hope this finds you all well and happy. I'm really looking forward to spending some time together today. We are going to work on three super cool projects together. I can hardly wait to share these with y'all. So without further ado, let's get started. For our first project today, y'all, we are going to do a little bit of sewing. And I have a design idea for some pillows for the fall, for my fall decor in the sitting room, here in my sitting room. And I don't know if these are gonna work, but we're certainly going to give it a try. So I wanna make some round pillows because we always do square ones and I like to do things just a little bit different occasionally. So I thought round would be a lot of fun and just add a fun flair to my fall decor. So I've picked out some fabulous pro uh, fabrics that I can hardly wait to go play with and go sew. So y'all, are you ready to go do a little bit of sewing? To get started with this project, we're first going to need a pattern. And I have created this pattern out on a great big giant piece of poster board. And then I used Michael's beam compass to draw out this 21 inch circle. And then I cut it out of the poster board. So we're going to go ahead and place this on my fabric. And the fa first fabric that I want to play with here is this really pretty corduroy. This is one of the softest corduroys I think I have ever seen. So I'm going to get it laid out on the corduroy and then I realize oh I should probably flip this wrong side out because I'm actually going to use um, a friction marker to trace around my pattern because it's too thick for me to pin it to the fabric because of it being a poster board okay so we're going to go ahead get my fabric flipped right side out lay my pattern down and then I'm going to trace around it using a friction pin Oh, and I did find this corduroy fabric at Joanne Fabrics, and I do believe I got this on sale, but even not on sale, it wasn't too spendy. All right, so let's go ahead and get this pattern drawn onto our fabric so we can cut it out. jump in to and just start cutting this out I decided I better pin my pieces together because I don't want this fabric moving around at all when I cut I want everything I want both front and back to be perfectly aligned with each other and to be the same exact size and shape so I do come in and just pin around all of the edges and I pinned a lot I put a lot of pins in this because I really wanted to be extra cautious that this was not going to move around on me as I was cutting Just need to put one last pin into place and we can go ahead and start cutting this out so something to keep in mind this is just a little side note from me to you when you're cutting thicker fabric like this or any kind of fabric actually you should be sure to use really super sharp scissors if your scissors are on the dull side when you're cutting your um, pattern pieces out you don't get a very good a very nice clean cut so i do recommending recommend using good sharp scissors Okay, so I've got my first circle cut, and now I need to cut two more out on this one. And then I have all these really pretty coordinating fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out one each 
one circle each of these coordinating fabrics. And I don't know yet if I'm going to mix and match all of these together or if I'm going to have just the green on one couch and then these three on another, but we're just gonna get them all cut out and then get them sewn and then we'll see how they all look styled. All right, I have got all six of my pattern pieces cut out. I've done three with the corduroy and then three in these matching coordinating fabrics. So now we get to take everything to the sewing machine and start sewing. So as you're sewing, keep in mind, I'm just gonna go all the way around, but keep in mind that you want to leave about a three to four inch opening at the very bottom of your pillow because this is where we're going to flip it right sides out and stuff it. Also, something to remember when you're sewing, make sure that you sew everything right sides together so that you don't have raw edges unless that is the look that you are going for. So at the sewing machine, I am sewing everything on a straight stitch with a three quarter inch seam allowance. just like that we've got all six of our pieces sewn together so before I go to flip these right side out something that I love to do and if y'all have been with me for a while you have heard me say this a bazillion times but I really like to clean up my edges with pinking shears and Y'all, don't forget to check the description box for a supply list. I always have a big supply list of all the supplies that I use in each of the products listed in the description box for y'all. Okay, so the reason that I use the pinking shears is because, first of all, it cleans up the edges, but as, um, second of all, it gets rid of a lot of that extra bulk so that when we go to flip this right sides out, it flips a lot cleaner and it flips you know, it, it helps hold the shape when we flip it. So now let's just see if that theory worked. <laughs> so we'll go ahead, flip it right side out. And then I do take a little bit of time to get all of my seams nice and smooth and just get them all poked out so that I have a nice round shape. And the other thing that I really like to do after I get things flipped right side out is I do take everything to the iron and press all of my seams really, really well before I move on to the next step. Okay, so that first one is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this stack trim up all of my edges, and then we will be ready to stuff our pillow. Ta-da, just like that, we're ready. <laughs> I'm pretty fast, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start stuffing these. Now, as I was doing this, I was thinking in my mind, do I want these to end up looking round or do I want them to be flat circles? In the end, I decided on flat circles, so I, while I do stuff these pretty full, I used a, quite a bit of stuffing to stuff all six of these. I stuff everything and then push the stuffing really far out to the edges. And then as I do this, I kind of take my hand and just kind of spend a little time shaping everything because I don't want to end up with a ball. I really want like a round circle that is semi flat here. So I just spend some time shaping the stuffing as I am filling each one of the pillows. Okay. So I feel like at this point I've achieved the look that I was going for. So I'm going to stop there before I go overboard. So now I'm just going to go ahead and close up the bottom. And to close the bottom, I just fold my seams in, pin everything into place, and then I do take this back to the sewing machine to close all of these up. You can either glue this part, this step can either be glued or you can also hand sew this closed. So here it is, ready for me to take it to the sewing machine and sew everything together. 
close up that hole. <laughs> Well, y'all, I'm not too sure about the pillows. <laughs> you know, not every single design that I come with come up with actually turns out super cool. <laughs> I think the pillows are okay. I think they're they're gonna work for now because I just don't have the energy or the time to remake them. But I really do wish that I would have made them larger. I think I should have made them to be at least you know, like 24 or 25 inches, like Euro size in diameter, because I just feel like they turned out a little smaller than I wanted, wanted them to be. So they look a little weird on the couch. <laughs> they just look a little off scale or something. So I love the fabric. I'm happy with how the fabrics look. I just feel like the fabrics are very inviting and they just definitely have that you know, fall feel to them. However, I, like I said, I'm not sure that I am in love with these. <laughs> so I'm curious what y'all think. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of how these turned out because I'm curious. I would love to know your thoughts. project today, we are going to finish finish up our sculpted pumpkins and gourds that we uh, sculpted out of the air dry clay last week. They finally set up and y'all, it did take these about a full seven days to completely harden and to completely cure and set up. So, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of that is just because I used so much clay. I did experiment a little bit. So one of my pumpkins, I did end up making another one and one of them I made hollow. So I just sculpted the outside and left it hollow on the inside. That one did dry, but it still took a while. It took about five days for that one to fully cure. And one of y'all left a good suggestion last week for using aluminum foil to create your initial shape and then just sort of molding the clay around the aluminum foil and you use a lot less clay doing that. I am curious if any of you have actually tried that technique and that method because I was super curious if the clay was going to be end up being too thin and if it would crack when it dried. So if y'all, if any of you have tried that technique, let me know how it turned out for you because I really am super curious. Okay, y'all, enough rambling on about that. We're going to go ahead and jump right into finishing up these sculpted pieces. We're going to be painting them today and I'm really looking forward to this part because I love to do all things painting. So let's go play with some paint and finish up our sculpted pieces. Okay y'all, so let's talk about our sculpted air dry clay pieces. If y'all um, missed last week, we actually spent some time last week sculpting these and I went through the whole process of how I sculpted them. And now we have let them cure for seven days and we're gonna go ahead and get them painted. So if you missed last week, go back and watch that so you can see how we actually sculpted these. All right, y'all, so I have to say, I am super impressed with how well these cured and hardened and set up. I got zero cracks, there are no cracks in any of these. So I think the thing that I really learned is the slower air dry clay dries, the better. So I did keep these in my studio, which is a fairly cool environment. The room is pretty cold all the time. So while they did take forever and a day to harden and set up, I'm okay with that because I'm pleased with the results. They literally have no cracks. I love how well all of these pieces turned out, especially our little pumpkins. I just, well, I don't know. I can't say especially. I love them all. So this is the piece that I was talking about that I did hollow. So this is a hollow pumpkin and it dried just as well. I got no cracks in that 
either. Our stems set up really well, the leaves set up really well. So I'm just super excited and pleased with how well all of these cured. All right, y'all. So let's move into the most exciting part of this whole project, and that is finishing them. We're going to jump into painting these, which is my favorite part because I love how just using a whole bunch of paint and some layers of paint brings will bring all of these pieces to life. So the first thing I wanna do is get a base coat down on all of these. And I am using Folk Art, Folk Art brand paint. This is their new terracotta line. It's very, it's a textured paint and it's very similar to just adding like baking soda to your paint to get all of that texture. And this is what I'm gonna go ahead and use for the base coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this base coat on all of our little pumpkins and I will have all of the colors that I use on each of these pieces listed in the description box for y'all. All right, let's go ahead, get our base coat down on all of these so we can move on to really bringing these pieces to life. I knew that I really wanted my stems to have a very dark color on them, but I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to go with them. So for the base coat on these, I am simply just using this, it's Folk Art brand and it's called Coffee Bean. And because I knew I wanted them to have like some brown darkish color to them, I do end up changing these, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. So, but for now we're gonna go ahead and get a base coat on all of our stems as well. y'all so <laughs> I'm not sure if I should even say this out loud or not but as I was painting the little tiny stems <laughs> for the gourds I kept thinking to myself and I don't know hopefully I'm not the only one that is thinking this but I kept thinking to myself these look like little tiny cat poos <laughs> is that horrible or what okay you know I guess there's a little bit of child in all of us right <laughs> All right, let's move on to the gourds. Okay, so for the base coat on the gourds, I am going to use some of this Folk Art Terracotta brand paint, and I am using the color Concrete, and I really love this color. I think the color is so pretty. I, I will lighten these up sub substantially as we go, but I thought this would be a perfect base coat for these because I did want these to have a little bit of that concrete, that super textured concrete look to them when they are finished finished. As I was getting the base coat down on all of our gourds, I started thinking about the stems and I thought, I don't think I really like this brown color at all. So I ended up coming in and mixing some just jet black, just a very little bit of jet black with some burnt umber and it gave me this really rich beautiful dark 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 brown color and i like it so much better for the stems i don't know if the color is fully coming through on camera but it is so much prettier for these stems than that weird chocolatey brown i just was not liking that and after i got the stems all painted i do let them dry <laughs> i can't stop thinking about little tiny cat poos okay anyway I let those I set those aside let them dry really really well and then I do add a little bit of highlights and low lights to those stems after that first coat of or that second coat of paint is dry while that is drying let's work on our little pumpkins here okay so I've got the base coat on but then I was thinking I really so as I was working on these I had a lot of 
changes of mind with colors. But I, I decided I really want these to have a lot of green in them. And green is my absolute favorite color. If y'all have been with me for a while, you know green is one of my most favorite colors. But I didn't want to come in and just fully cover these with the green. I, I, I still want some of that base coat to kind of show through a little a tiny bit. So basically I am just br dry brushing this all on to this piece, but I do dry brush it on pretty heavily. So kind of at the end, most of that base coat does get covered, but we're going to come in and we're just going to start layering, layering, layering colors here to give this piece a lot of depth and dimension. And I did decide I really wanted these to look very rustic. So I got that initial base coat on. I dry brushed on some of the green and now I'm going to come back in with a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to mix that burnt umber with a little bit of that green to just kind of deepen and darken this a little bit and again I am dry brushing this on with just a very light hand I'm not trying to fully cover these as I go around and dry brush this on so we're just going to deepen this this is our third layer we're going to kind of go ahead and just deepen it and then we'll come in and add even more layers after this fully dries okay so here's what we have so far I'm loving this, but I do think we need to add in a few highlights to this. So I'm going to come in with a tiny little bit of orange, and I do believe this is actually called Pumpkin Spice. This color is its folk art brand, and it's called Pumpkin Spice. And I am just brushing this on in just a few spots. I'm not going to put it all over. I'm literally just doing this in a few spots and I am seriously using a dry brush here. Like I barely have any of this paint on my brush as I am doing this. So I'm just going to continue this on all of the little tiny pumpkins. I add in some of this uh, pumpkin spice color to give us um, like the the beginnings of some highlights and while those are drying because I do like to let all of my layers fully dry between each layer and each coat so now we'll go ahead and start working on the gourds and I want these gourds to be quite a bit lighter in color than our little mini pumpkins so I'm coming in again with some of that really pretty pumpkin spice color and I'm just just barely mixing this in with a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to go around all of these to create the first or well the beginning of our layering here so this is actually our second coat of paint but it's going to be the beginning of where we start adding in all of our layers to bring this piece to life and give it lots of depth and dimension this point this is where I just start taking a lot of creative liberties and I just play I literally just start playing with layers I like to work in layers as I am painting any kind of piece because I just feel like adding in all those layers is what adds depth it's what adds dimension it gives the piece texture it gives it lots of life so I'm just playing now at this point. So I've gotten that initial first layer of our paints down and now I'm just coming in with a little bit of burnt umber, adding in a few more layers. And again, I'm not fully covering the piece. I'm just kind of adding it here and there wherever I just feel like I want lots of highlights and low lights. And after I get that in, let it completely dry, I'm gonna come back in with some of that initial concrete color that we used and start adding in a lot of our highlights to kind of just bring this piece to that final finishing touch this is what's going to add the finishing touch to this and i just keep doing this and i keep playing and i do this same exact technique to all of the gourds to the other two that we haven't even started painting yet but we will get there and i do the same thing to all of them
The beautiful thing about paint is if you do something and you're not sure you like it, you just cover it up. <laughs> and that's what happened here. I felt like I got a little bit too heavy handed with that first highlight color, that initial concrete color that we used as the base. So I came back in, added a little bit more of that orangey pumpkin spice color, and then I went over and put another layer of the burnt umber on it. Okay, y'all. So, ta-da! Here they are, all finished, and I am absolutely loving how these turned out. I love that the rustic feel, the rustic just kind of vintage feel of them. So now we need to go ahead and glue on the stems. And to do this, I am using some Gorilla Construction Adhesive here in clear. This is clear so that we don't see it. And I just add a little bit to the pumpkin and then a little to the stem and adhere it and then let it set for 24 hours to fully cure. Okay, so I have to say, I love how our sculpted pieces turned out. I really love these, y'all. I love the color palette. <laughs> the little, the little, our little miniature pumpkin ones, I love the green. I just think they are so cool looking. I love how we sort of made them look rustic and a little bit vintage. They're fun. I just, I don't know if I've got all the words, but I just think they are fun. They turned out amazing. And I know I'm really going to enjoy these pieces throughout the fall season. Let me know y'all. Again, I love to hear your comments and I love to hear your thoughts on what you think of how this project turned out. <laughs> Today we are going to make some candles. Y'all know me. I love candles. I love having candles around. I just think they add so much ambiance to a space. They just bring in that element of coziness and just that warm, inviting feel. And I love making candles, especially this time of year, because I love to give them as gifts. So we're going to make some candles today in some really cute pumpkin shaped vessels. I'm super excited to try this and hopefully they turn out really good. So, cause I do want to give them as gifts, like I said. So y'all let's go make some candles and see how they turn out. Okay y'all. So we are going to go ahead and move through our candle making fairly quickly here today because this is a pretty cut and dry project. So first thing we're going to need is obviously our cute little darling pumpkin vessels. You're going to need some wicks and you're going to need some wick um, adhesive things. I just use these little dots. These are like glue dots, but they're designed specifically for candles so they can handle high heat. We're also going to need some wick setters. This is what's going to keep our wicks in place as our candles are setting. You're going to need spoons. You're going to need a measuring glass for the fragrance and you're going to need a really good thermometer. I'm using a candy thermometer here because I just think it's the most thorough for candle making. We will also need our fragrance oils and then obviously we're going to need the star of the show which is our candle wax. And I'm going to go ahead and have every single one of the supplies that we use for this project listed in the description box for y'all. Everything I use will be listed and because we are going through this pretty quickly I'm also going to have all the instructions like some of the details and some of the specifics in the description box for y'all as well. So the first thing I'm going to to do while my wax is melting is just go ahead and set all of my wicks and I'm placing this as 
close to center as I possibly can. If you're unsure about that, you can actually use a wick setter. They're pretty cool. I use them for bigger vessels when I really want to make sure I get the wick precisely in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and continue getting the wick set into every one of our cute little pumpkin vessels. Okay, so I've got our vessels all ready and prepared for the wax. And my wax is melted now, and I've let it come to the appropriate temperature for adding in our essential oil. So you wanna heat your wax to about 185, and then between 145 and 135 Fahrenheit is when you want to go ahead and add in your fragrance oils. And I am measuring this out pretty carefully. I do like to be precise here, but I also tend to add a lot more because I like a lot of fragrance and a lot of really good throw when my candles are burning. So I usually add pretty close to double the <laughs> double the fragrance than what um, you would normally add. So if you use one pound of wax, normally that would be two ounces and I usually use between two and a half and three ounces of fragrance. Anyway, so once you add in your fragrance oil, you wanna go ahead and stir this very thoroughly. I usually stir for anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute because you wanna make sure that this fragrance oil is fully emulsified into your wax. Now I've let my wax cool to pouring temperature, which is around 100 degrees. The cooler your wax is when you pour, the better pour you're going to get, the more even pour you're gonna get, and you're gonna get a nice smooth surface across the top. After I pour the wax into the vessel, I set my little wick setter, and this is what keeps the wick centered in your bowl as the wax is setting up. And as I was pouring these, I did have a little bit of extra wax. So I have a perfect trick and tip for that. Um, there is a science to knowing exactly how much wax you need per vessel. And I'm gonna have that little equation in the description box for y'all but i often have leftover so of each fragrance because i'm doing three different fragrances here so i had quite a bit left over of this specific fragrance and so i decided to go ahead and make some cute little wax melts and i have these fun little molds these are actually chocolate molds that i found at walmart but they are perfect for wax melts so i'm going to go ahead and fill each of these with my excess um, candle wax and then we will move on to our next step. As I said before, I am making three different fragrances here, and these are some of my favorite fall fragrances, so I will have them listed in the description box for y'all as well. Don't forget, there's always a big giant supply list in the description box in case you're interested in recreating these the same way or just need some inspiration and some ideas. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish filling up the last two remaining vessels here and then we're going to let this wax or let our candles fully set and fully cure for about 24 hours after about 24 hours i do come back in and trim all of my wicks but you do not want to trim your wicks until that wax has had a lot of time to fully set and fully cure so here we are about 24 hours after I poured all of these and I'm just gonna trim up all of the wicks and I trim these to about an inch. I leave about an inch of a wick left on there. Um, you do want to trim it a little bit more before you burn it, but I just tend to leave a little extra so that people can trim it to their own liking because I'm going to give these as gifts. So, But anyway, let's finish trimming up the wicks and then we're going to have a little bit of fun embellishing our cute little wax melt bags as well as our fun little pumpkin dishes.
One of the most satisfying parts of candle making for me is demolding the wax melts. This is just truly a satisfying process. <laughs> and I did let these cure for about 24 hours as well before demolding them. You know, sometimes it's just the simple things, right? This is truly a very satisfying step. Okay, so once I get all of these demolded, we are going to put them into some really cute bags. But before we do that, we need to have a little fun in embellishing these bags. So I have gone ahead and cut out these cute little iron-on vinyl pieces. These are just the heat transfer vinyl, and I cut them out on my... Uh, Cricut Joy and now we'll just go ahead and simply iron them on so to iron them on I do use my little mini iron and I set it at about 330 degrees and I also put a little cardboard inside our little pouches here these are some little burlap pouches that I found on Amazon and I'll have those linked for y'all as well but I put the little cardboard in there just to prevent that vinyl from you know going all the way through and then we can't open the bag I hope that made sense <laughs> so after I get the pumpkin on I'm going to go ahead and add just this cute little word it just simply says fall I just kept this pretty simple so I'll cover up our little pumpkin that we've already ironed on just to protect it so that it doesn't you know get melty or whatnot when i iron on the fall so again i'm just using my little mini heat press to do this i set it at about 330 degrees and i hold it on for about 30 to 35 seconds let it cool a little bit before peeling off that carrier paper and here they are all finished so we'll go ahead and get our wax melts into the bags and i just think these turn out so darn cute I am also going to have these cute little patterns available for y'all as a free download. If you want to cut some of these out for your you can iron these on to just about anything. You could even hand make your little pouches if you wanted to. But I will have the link for the free download for these patterns in the description box for y'all. Oh my gosh, these are just so cute. I love how these turned out. Okay, so let's go ahead and start embellishing our little pumpkin candles. This is such a simple process. All I did was make some cute little tags with the title of each fragrance on um i ran this through my printer on some of that uh this is printer fabric it's printable fabric <laughs> so i ran that through and then you peel off the backing and it really just feels like a piece of fabric that's been printed on i really love this stuff so i'm going to glue on the little tag and then add a cute little acorn to this and i think that's going to be it i just want to keep this super simple i love how these turned out i think it is so fun and such a cute way to just add a fragrance tag to your candle and give it a little extra something special. I think these end up just looking so cute. Sometimes I think just the simplicity of this is so sweet. So I'm just gonna do the same process for every single one of our candles. Well, y'all, I think our candles turned out absolutely darling. <laughs> they are so fun. I love the scent. They smell oh so good. And I can hardly wait to start giving these as gifts. I've got several people in, in mind that I'm excited to give a candle to. In fact, I would love to give a candle to one of y'all. So we're just gonna do a little impromptu drawing. If you are interested in participating in the giveaway, just comment candle in the comment section and then I'll put your name in for a drawing. We'll draw next week for a winner and then I can send one of you a candle. <laughs> I think this is gonna be so much fun. Alrighty, y'all. Well, I guess.
yes, that is going to wrap things up for today. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me and for crafting with me. I had a lot of fun working on today's projects and I hope that y'all enjoyed them as well and that they gave you some ideas and a little inspiration for your fall home decor. Okay, friends, well, that's it for today. I look forward to hanging out again next week. Our fall series continues. Next week, we're actually going to jump into a fun Halloween special. We're gonna work on some really cute, cute cutesies. <laughs> I don't really do spooky Halloween, but we're definitely gonna make some fun, cute projects next week. So y'all come back and see me again next week for a more fun crafting. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. That's a wrap.